wait for three weeks yeah okay thank you so next i uh, invite our next speaker uh, dr manju uh, so dr manju is uh, 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 currently working as a glaucoma consultant at uh, giridhar eye hospital kochi and uh, she'll be talking on uh, the topic coexisting cataract and glaucoma whether we have to uh, go for combined or a sequential surgery thank you thank you dr ambika for the invite i'll be talking on the management of uh, coexisting cataract and glaucoma glaucoma and cataract often coexist so the choices include one is sequential approach that is you can do a glaucoma filtering surgery first followed by cataract surgery whenever indicated or you can do a cataract surgery followed by a glaucoma surgery later or you can do a combined surgery and do both the surgeries in one sitting so what are the things you have to consider before deciding you have to find out the extent of uh, glaucomatous damage the uh, stage of the disease and the presenting intraocular pressure and what is your target iop and do a perimetry to see the extent of the severity of the damage and uh, consider the number of agms the patient is currently on and how the patient is responding to the medication and make sure the patient is compliant and tolerable with the anti glaucoma medication and also the amount of cataract other factors which you have to consider include age of the patient ocular and systemic comorbidities whether the patient is able to undergo two surgeries at two different times and socio economic status whether they are able to afford two different uh, Uh, two stage procedure so now let us look at the cataract surgery alone it definitely gives a visual improvement and it increases the anterior chamber depth and angle width more in angle closure disease but to some extent in open angle glaucoma also intraocular pressure reduction is more in angle closure compared to open angle and this iop reduction is usually related to the preop intraocular pressure A study from uh, PGI has shown that the cataract surgery leads to significant drop in IOP across the spectrum of angle closure disease with visually significant cataract. So cataract surgery alone may be considered initially for IOP control even in advanced or medically uncontrolled primary angle closure glaucoma followed by glaucoma filtering surgery later if required. So what are the options of cataract surgery you can do either a phaco or a small incision cataract surgery so as you all know phaco takes only a small area for the surgery and the superior conjunctiva is untouched so it the trabeculectomy future will be easy but if you are doing an sics and in the superior quadrant future trabeculectomy will be difficult and the complications post op include the iop spike will be uh, there in the immediate post op period and this you have to manage in addition to the anti glaucoma medications which the patient is already on and the post op cme may be slightly more in glaucomatous patients and patient has to continue the anti glaucoma medications which they are already on glaucoma filtering surgery alone it helps to achieve a low target iop compared to cataract surgery alone so when you want to have a very low target you may have to opt for a filtering surgery and the better success rate compared to combined surgery uh, in if you do a fil uh, filtering surgery first and then do a cataract surgery so as you all know but the problem with the filtering surgery is not the surgery per se the identification and the management of post op complications for the success of the blub and it doesn't give any visual improvement rather it may cause a cataract formation or it accelerate the existing cataract and patient may need a cataract surgery later which in turn can lead to failure of filtration and decreased iop control so if you want to do a cataract surgery after the filtering surgery you may have to wait for 3 to 4 months after the filtering surgery you make sure a preop low iop either use dimox or manitol preoperatively in addition to the anti glaucoma medications avoid excessive massage after the block sometimes because of the mitomycin the blub may very thin so you have to be very careful and leave the blub untouched T temporal clear corneal phaco is better and suture the cataract wound Uh, is also indicated and use of nsaid is post op combined surgery iop lowering is better than cataract surgery alone and better visual improvement compared to filtering surgery alone it also prevents the iop spikes in the immediate post operative period because already have done the blub 
filtering. It uh, compared to two-stage procedure, the cost will be low and positive complications as in uh, a cataract surgery alone and the success rate of trabeculectomy is low when you combine with the cataract surgery. So combined, what are the options? SICS trabeculectomy, phaco trabeculectomy and phaco with mix. I don't have much uh, uh, experience with the phaco with mix. FACO you can do either a two-stage procedure or single-stage procedure and, and I mean, two-site or single-site. Two-site approach, the visual improvement is same as uh, single-site or two-site, but the less astigmatism will be less in case of two-site approach and the IOP reduction may be more, but it takes more operating time and more endothelial cells uh, loss is reported. So let us look at some case scenarios. This is a 56 year old female who was diagnosed as a primary angle closure disease which was incidentally detected 3 days back. So we don't have a baseline IOP and the patient was already on Bimat and Diamox. So anti, um, BCVA was 618 N18 in the right eye, AC was shallow, lens was showing cataractus changes in the right eye, both eyes, pupil was showing RAPD in the right eye with the disc near total cupping. Intraocular pressure was 9 mm and 8 mm because the patient is on Diamox TID. Gonioscopy revealed closed angles. So patient underwent YAC-PI in both eyes and post-PI IOP was controlled with um, a fixed dose combination of two drugs in the right eye and single drug in left eye and the central corneal thickness was normal. So the lens was around NS2 to 3 cataract with a near total cupping and the IOP was 10 mm post PI and the gonioscopy showed synechial angle closure around 180 to 270 degree. The fields were showing advanced damages in the right eye. So this was a case of advanced PACG with IOP control with 2 AGM with a significant cataract. So in this case you can opt for a FACO with IOL alone because the uh, I, cataract surgery alone will give you uh, a reduction in the IOP and maybe patient may not require uh, these two anti-glaucoma medications in the post-op period. So the next case is a 54-year-old male who is a non-case of POAG since two years and initially IOP was controlled with a fixed dose combination of bimetoprost with timelol and on follow-up the patient's uh, pressures were 20 and 21 millimeters in both eyes and the disc was showing advanced damage in both eyes with an early lens changes, gonioscopy, open angles. So we tried to add the medications but the patient was not responding to adding medications and the fields were showing over the progression uh, over the years some progression in both eyes. So this was a case of both eyes advanced POAG, IOP not controlled with maximum medical therapy and the cataract is very early. So we can opt for a trabeculectomy with mitomycin C both eyes maybe left eye first and then can plan a cataract surgery later whenever it is indicated. It's a, the third case is a 62 year old male with diabetes and known case of combined glaucoma post PI one year patient was on bimetoprost eye drops. So on examination the best corrected visual acuity was 615 N10 in both eyes um, in right eye and 612 N8 in the left eye. Cataractus lens in both eyes with a patent PI in the anterior segment. The disc was showing advanced damage. IOP was 48 millimeters and 46 and the gonioscopy showed open angles post PA with few PAS. So we tried to add it, a fixed dose combination of three drugs. IOP reduced to 28 and 23 with maximum medical therapy. Fields were showing advanced damage. So this was a case of combined glaucoma and the IOP was not controlled with maximum medical therapy open angles and there was a significant cataract. So in this case you can opt for a combined phaco trap with mitomycin C under GVP. So my preference is cataract surgery with IOL implantation alone in case of lens induced glaucomas, ocular hypertension, in open angle glaucomas with significant cataract if the glaucoma is mild, IOP is under control with 102 anti-glaucoma medication and the patient is well tolerated and compliant with the anti-glaucoma medication. In primary angle closure disease with cataract, if it is moderate glaucoma with mainly oppositional closure, IOP under control with 102 AGMs and well tolerated with medication. Glaucoma filtering surgery alone in case of very advanced glaucoma, moderate to severe glaucoma in case of failure to achieve target IOP despite maximum medical therapy, if not tolerating AGMs or poor compliance with AGMs with an early cataract changes.
combined surgery, visually significant cataract with moderate to severe open angle glaucomas with more than 2 AGMs, failure to achieve the target with maximum therapy or not tolerating or complying with AGM. And if two surgeries at different times not feasible. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Manju. You have uh, summarized all the points uh, really well. I think... Uh, uh, Manju, uh, I have one doubt. Like, is there any preference for any type of OVD during when you're, if you're doing combined surgery, like dispersive, cohesive, if it is retained? Uh, maybe. Once the cataract is done, then I put the uh, cohesive viscoelastic to complete my trap. And maybe if I'm feeling it is shallow, I may need a bit of cohesive inside so that most of the most of shallow is there. Thank you. 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 I, whenever you are combining with the filtering surgery, I think you need a long, uh, long term course for the steroids. I usually give two hourly for one week and then give a two, I mean, two weeks stay for it, six, four, three, two, one. So it may go for a little longer time. Thank you. Uh, doctor, you had a question. You had a question, doctor? Yeah, you please come. So, in the uh, cataract surgeons, we are very uh, prepared to dealing with the inside the eye. Any viscoelastic inside the eye in the end of surgery. We do, uh, uh, we take quite a lot of meticulous time to make sure that behind the eye, will, in front of the eye, will sulcus, angles, everything is washed off. Uh, but I've noticed that most glaucoma surgeons say that, you know, this is a good uh, thing to leave a little bit if you feel that it may over filter. Uh, so, what about the uh, post-op inflammation? Do you see that uh, there is more? Cohesive, I have not seen much of uh, uh, post-op inflammation more. But HPMC, I have seen. So, I don't use HPMC. Once the uh, cataract is done, then from behind the IOL and bag, I will remove. And then in the AC, I'll, f I'll put cohe and while completing the surgery. And I try to wash off a a wash of most of it, but sometimes I leave in uh, Koki back so that immediate post of hypotony won't be there. And uh, one more thing the uh, prostaglandin analogs before you start surgery, uh, do you shift over to any other thing or is that? Uh, I, some people say, but I usually know. But I start uh, um, Predfort one week prior QID. Okay, so you don't normally stop. Usually, when I uh, when I opt for a filtering or a combine, the patient will be already on maximum medical therapy, and the pressures were maybe 30s or 40s. So I don't have a choice uh, to withdraw PG analog, uh, and uh, anyway, I'll be giving diamox. So I start uh, steroids and continue the uh, Prost prostaglandins in post op post operatively intraop. If there was any complication. If cataract alone is uh, considered, then maybe post-op I may have to change the PGA to some other AGM if it is cataract alone. Okay, and one last question. Uh, sorry. Uh, one last question. Uh, would you do PI in a patient uh, who's got uh, less than 180 degrees uh, sine K, but you're planning a cataract surgery, would you do a PI anyway before that? In an angle closure, I prefer to do a PI before uh, cataract surgery. Okay. So that it will give some space and uh, chance of uh, um, getting an acute angle closure while waiting for the cataract surgery after dilatation may be also less. Thank you. Thank you.